All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us here today on Earth Day. Uh, I'm Mary Kate. I'm the Great Lakes Program Coordinator here at the Toronto Zoo. And today I'm joined by Mermaids Paige and JC from Mermaids Make Waves. And they're here today to talk to us about Earth Day and in particular about invasive species. So that's what we're going to be talking about to celebrate Earth Day today. So I'm going to pass it over to JC and she is going to get us started with a little introduction. Thank you so much, Mary Kate. Paige and I are so excited to be here today with the Toronto Zoo and the Great Lakes Program. Earth Day, this is the 52nd annual Earth Day. It was started in 1970. And it was started because when we went to the moon in the 60s, we turned around and we saw our beautiful blue planet that was isolated all by itself and we realized it has to be protected. So here, the, we're gonna learn all about what the Great Lakes Program is doing to help monitor and combat invasive species in our Great Lakes because our Great Lakes ecosystem is essential to our climate here in the GTA. I'm going to pass the mic over now to my friend Ocean Mermaid Page and she's going to get started with the interview with our friend Mary Kate. Thanks so much JC. So Mary Kate we want to talk about um, the Asian carp um, which is an invasive species here in our lakes and um, what is an invasive species exactly? Right, so an invasive species is a species that is found somewhere outside of its native range, so where it would be naturally found. So that's one of the two qualifying features. So it's found outside of its native range, but also it has to have a detrimental uh, impact on the ecosystem where it's found outside of its native range. So it has to have those two particular features. Okay, and Asian carp is an invasive species, so why is it that they're an invasive species exactly? Yeah, so that's a great question. And we're here today, actually, I, I didn't mention, at our Big Bad and Ugly exhibit, where we have the four different uh, Asian carp species, or sorry, three of the four different species, uh, black carp, big head carp, um, silver carp is the one we don't have, uh, and then grass carp, I bl <laughs> blanked for a minute there. Um, so Asian carps were introduced uh, into North America in the late 70s as a way to control algae um, in fish farms. So that's, they were introduced, that's one of the pathways that invasive species uh, are introduced is when we, we um, introduce them intentionally as a form of biological control. So they were introduced uh, because one of their particular characteristics is that they eat algae and they eat a lot of it. So they were introduced to help control that algae but the problem was they escaped from those aquaculture farms and then they were able to survive and travel further north to the, towards the Great Lakes ecosystem. And that's the issue now is that they're very close to entering the Great Lakes and we want to stop that from happening. So now that we know what an invasive species is and what invasive species we're talking about, how does um, a species actually get to the Great Lakes or out of their habitat? How does that really happen? Yes, yeah, so that's a great question. And there's a few different answers to it. So in the example of our Asian carp species, they were introduced intentionally as a form of biological control. So that's one, one way. Uh, another way is through natural range expansion. So with global warming, with climate change, as temperatures rise and ecosystems change a bit, some species will naturally move and naturally start to take up residence in other places. So uh, that's another uh, way they can do it is natural range expansion. And then the third way is accidental transport. So for example, um, you might be familiar with zebra mussels as an invasive species. Uh, they were transported and introduced to the Great Lakes through ballast water in ships. So when transatlantic ships are crossing the ocean, they have to put water inside the ship to help weigh it down. And then when they get to their destination, they empty that water out. And when they empty the water, whatever critters were in there are able to, to escape. So that's how zebra mussels were introduced. Um, and so that was by accident. It was not intentional, um, but that is certainly uh, another pathway. So those are the three kind of main, main pathways for it. And is there any way for us to maybe help prevent this from happening in the future? Definitely. So one of the biggest things is being aware of this. So being aware that our actions can have these consequences, uh, even when they're unintentional. So a big one, when I, we we're talking about ships and accidental introductions, something we can definitely do is be aware when we're moving from one ecosystem to another. So there is one campaign called Clean Drain Dry, which is where we're always cleaning any boating or fishing equipment, uh, making sure it's empty and making sure it's dry before going to another location. And the same is true for our boots. So even if we're you know, going for a hike somewhere in a park one day and then the next day maybe going to another location, we want to make sure to clean off our boots 
uh, and get any particular microorganisms off them um, to prevent spreading, spreading anything that we don't even know. We might not even know it's there. Um, so those are two things we can do. And then the other thing is to be aware. So in the case of our, our Asian carp species, knowing how to identify those species, knowing what they look like and what to look for is a really um, a key thing. So we, we know an invasive species when we spot it. Amazing. And another question that I had was, when an invasive species like Asian carp is entered into our waterways, what type of impact does it have? So an invasive species like Asian carps or, or other types of species can have significant impacts on ecosystems. And kind of in a broad sense, they can impact biodiversity. So they're out competing native species for food and space and shelter and reproductive habitat. Uh, and that can cause declines in those native species, which ultimately impacts the biodiversity of that area. And when we start to have a decline in biodiversity, the balance in that ecosystem gets thrown off. And that can ultimately have an impact on that ecosystem and on climate as a whole, because even uh, an ecosystem like the Great Lakes, which is actually a very big ecosystem, um, can have uh, climate impacts as well. And what exactly is the Asian carp impact that you guys are seeing that um, could be detrimental um, from it being an invasive species in our lakes? Yeah, good question. So in uh so right now we don't have any established populations uh in the great lakes uh per se which is good there's been isolated um sightings and and uh, catches of grass carp in particular. Um, but in the United States, there are areas where there are Asian carp populations. And in particular, uh, some of the issues they cause is they prevent people from being able to use waterways recreationally. So silver carps, for example, that's the species we don't have here. And the reason for that is because they are jumpers. So when they're startled, they jump and they jump in this kind of frenzy. So it makes it really difficult to boat or swim or fish in those areas. So they can have a recreational impact, but then of course they have an impact on the ecosystem because they're really big fish and they can disrupt the ecosystem by you know essentially making a mess changing the water quality and just taking up a lot of space from our native species so those are just kind of some of the threats but also uh the asian carp species as i mentioned eat a lot so if they're eating a lot you can imagine there's a lot coming out the other end as well so that's going to impact water quality for sensitive native species as well Amazing. Yeah, um, I know that we're big fish too, and we get a little jumpy, so I guess we can kind of relate to, to the silver carp. But uh, um, so you um, head up the Great Lakes program, and I just want to know what is the Great Lakes program doing um, in terms of research, monitoring, um, and helping to combat this? Um, so just tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing. Yeah, so here at the zoo, a lot of what we do is raise awareness about these species. And we work with a lot of different partners on different projects to promote awareness uh, and understanding of invasive species and the impacts that they cause. So for example, of course, we have our exhibit here where people can actually come and see three of the four uh, Asian carp species so they can actually get to know what they look like. Um, but we also work with our partners to raise awareness. So we talk about... Uh, not just Asian carps, but other species like zebra mussels and round goby um, when we go out to do public events and when we do uh, outreach with students. This will provide educational materials about uh, invasive species. And that's really what we're trying to do is trying to spread the message and also spread the message about what people can do uh, to help protect, uh, or sorry, help uh, protect our native ecosystems. And, and what can people do? Is there something that, um, besides reaching out to you guys and learning more and educating themselves, coming to this amazing exhibit at the Toronto Zoo, is there anything that people can do um, at home or if they see this invasive species while they're out and about? Yeah, so there is a really good app. It's called Ed Maps. And Ed Maps, it's a website as well, is a place you can go to report sightings of invasive species. So you can phone them, there's a hotline, and then there's also a website where you can go and it's, it is a smartphone app. So if you think you see an invasive species, you can certainly report it through that hotline. There are people on the other end who will follow up and, and follow up on that report to see uh, what actually was found. And they keep a record of all of those reports uh, to help us follow up in case there are sightings of any invasive species. So that's a big one. So reporting any sightings, but then also, as I mentioned, um, 
practicing clean, drain, dry if you are near water bodies or if you're hiking, for example. And uh, another thing too, if you like fishing, is to be aware of your bait and make sure you're not transporting bait and making sure you're getting it in the place where you're fishing and knowing what that bait is. So again, being able to identify those species because a lot of the invaders can look a lot like our native species. That's incredible. I think I've learned so much from this and I definitely want to um, tell everybody who's out there to make sure that they do download this app um, and be aware that there are invasive species out there. Um, Some of the species that are out there, um, they shouldn't be. So make sure you do report it if you find out. And JC, did you have any more questions you wanted to ask? (laughs) Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Paige. Um, I wanted to say that this year's Earth Day theme is invest in our planet and how people at home can help invest in the GTA area is by following and keeping up with what the Great Lakes program is doing and supporting them, Um, donating to programs that they are working with, donating to the Toronto Zoo and the work that they do here in monitoring these species and helping educate the public and also making sure you're downloading that app. That's Ed Maps, E D E D D E D D double D's, two D's. And I'm really thankful that Mary Kate took the time out to talk to Paige and I about the invasive species. They're not quite in our Great Lakes yet. It, that's a number that's concerning. But um, Mermaid JC did have an encounter with zebra mussels last mm. summer. Uh, they 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 were not so nice to me. And with Earth Day here this year and the 52nd annual Earth Day, it's always important that if we want to go out and enjoy our Great Lakes and enjoy our rivers, that we're helping take care of them. The public is responsible for the care of our waterways. Otherwise, we won't be enjoying them for very much longer. Um, Where can the public find you and help support you online? Yeah, definitely. So you can check out the Great Lakes program page on the Toronto Zoo's website. And the Great Lakes program is also on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, where we try to post lots of information and fun videos about what we're up to. So definitely make sure to check us out there. And just to your point about, you know, investing in our earth, I think that's that's exactly it. I think a lot of it comes down to investing some time into learning about these issues and understanding them and um, just doing whatever it is that we can with the time that we have to to help support our ecosystems. Now, you did also mention one thing that I wanted to ask a question about. Um, You mentioned the uh, drain. What was that lovely slogan you had again? It's called Clean Drain Dry. Clean Drain Dry. Does that apply to mermaids too and our tails? If we were to be swimming in a river or a lake, would we have to thoroughly wash our tails to make sure we're not transporting little eggs of hitchhikers? Yes, I would say that is a great point for sure. So any, anything that's in the water, we want to make sure that we clean it off, dry it, uh, and make sure that it is ready to go for going into another different water body. So that's very interesting to think about our boats, our swimming equipment, our boots along the shoreline. We don't want to be transferring any Hitchhikers, we don't, we don't like them going from the different bodies of water. Well, thank you so much for talking to us this morning, Mary-Kate. Thank you. thank you for coming, Ocean Mermaid Page. We love to see your face. And thank you so much, everybody, for joining us here at the Toronto Zoo this morning. Have a wonderful Earth Day, and make sure that you're kind to the planet and each other. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.